morning gamer all right let's just dive into it blue black mill um if we hit some graveyard decks we're probably gonna have a good time we've got three surgicals and two crypt incursions in the main we notably have a bunch of ley line in the voids in the sideboard as well um, one thing that's notable about this specific configuration that's been submitted that's different than the builds we've played in the past um this build does not have uh, Ensnaring Bridge in the main deck. It's got most of them in the sideboard. I've been a fan of that card in the main and past configuration. This build is electing to play Fatal Push as its main deck interactive card. So I'm interested to see how that goes. How do you donate on mobile? You can click this link right here, and it should uh, it should pop up into your uh, into your mobile browser for you. Be doing a little bit of a longer stream today, but we're not going to do all magic. I'm planning to do two modern decks to kick things off this morning. Then we're going to do three standard, and then we're going to play some Underlords after that. <clears throat> no, thank you. I appreciate the support. Turn one crab. Let's do it. Let's do it and do it and do it. Do, 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 do. Hopefully, the right deck where this uh, surgical attraction is text. Yeah, based on based on how standards been, I think we're probably going to keep up two modern decks in the morning either for either until the new set releases on Arena or until we run out of decks in the queue. So, a Otros four more months towards my sword. Put the tier 2 subs for dealer's choice. Thanks. I appreciate that tier 2 level support. I appreciate you keeping me around. Hope you're having a good good Thursday wherever you're at. Yeah, Gamer, the uh, Valve version of the auto chess genre, the Underlords, is supposed to be having an open beta release on iOS and Android that has full cross-platform play um, later, later, this, uh, later this week. We are playing the second best mail deck. All right, it looks like my opponent's trying to, attempting to kill us on the first turn of the game. Sorry, second turn of the game. I took one turn, they took one turn, one plus one is two. Hey, thank you for the very generous tier three reset. Put the sword's hardened scales will do. I believe that should bump scales up into either Monday or Tuesday next week. I am I am taking tomorrow off from streaming magic since the mythic championships going on. Yeah, uh we might be able to surgical nourishing shoal. And prevent them from killing us. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I think if Valve gets the first... Uh, this is an Arena MC, so it'll be just standard best of three constructed. Which is actually kind of dry. I really wish... Their timing on these Mythic Championships really sucked, in my opinion. I wish we would have had standard at the beginning of the format and modern deep into the format. It's, it feels really weird to me. It's almost like I I think they understand their format and they just didn't want the more popular one to happen later. I don't I don't know what the deal is. Hey, thanks for the 23 months play three on. We'll come back. Yeah, so like the part where surgical and shoal doesn't work for us is if they cast shoal and like gain a bunch. And then, like, I surgical it, and then they draw, and then shoal again in response is the less than ideal route. Yeah, almost to the to the pony.
And they produce the color mana they need to win. Yeah, definitely, Burgle. Wonder if they didn't find a shoal in their top, the top half of their deck. That would be embarrassing. That's why I haven't conceded yet, because they do have a they do have a failure rate. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they're they're spinning their tires on these banamorphos kind of implies they don't have a shoal. Yeah, the the cards with no artwork has been really bad for the last couple patches. Yay! What an interesting and engaging game of Modern the Gathering. Spin to win. Spin to win. Hey, Fatal Push is bad here. Murderous Guts bad. Crypt Incursion doesn't do anything. The rest of these cards also don't really do anything, right? Yeah, these cards at least, like, have some text. Hey, Ahmed, thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a good Thursday, and thanks for the compliment. Hey, Coast Left, thanks for the tip. Woo. For great content and as per mill, 10 out of 10. I might do, I've got my standard decks locked in for today, but that'll push Esper mill right to the top after today is done. So I might do some standard over the weekend, but if not over the weekend, definitely Monday at the latest. We'll get to Esper mill in standard. I appreciate the support coast. I might I might do like a Saturday or Sunday post MC stream. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling and what the what the boss has planned. Yeah, I'm gonna do a one two three stream today. So we're gonna do like six or seven hours of magic, and then we're gonna do a couple hours of Underlords to wrap things up. See how that goes. They're supposed to be releasing their open beta uh, today or tomorrow. That'll include a mobile release, which is awesome. I think Double Archive Trap is actually just keepable here because they have to search their library to combo and double trapping them after they do probably means they can't win the game. What? Are they playing this in addition to Serum Visions? Do they think they're going to cast the Believe half of this card? Is that is that where they're at? Also, also worth noting, you can Mission Briefing Archive Trap, which is sweet. If we hit a land next turn, they're probably dead. Because this is, this is Mill 36. That was a uh, reason to believe. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Maybe this is a card they're playing because it pitches to both forces. Oh, it pitches to Shoal too. Huh? Interesting. Maybe. Yeah, I could see. I could see that. That's a little consistency in those respects. Oh, it's a fetch land too. They're, they're probably dead. I'm not, I'm not sure they can actually win. Mill, Mill is like randomly good against combo decks. Oh, they have Leyline of Sanctity. We're very lucky they didn't have that card in their opener. Very lucky they didn't have that card in their opener. This one of the things, so we've played a lot of Sultai Mill in the past because you get access to Assassin's Trophy, which is a nice card. Like, this deck only has one way in at 75 to take a Leyline of Sanctity off the table, which is less than ideal. 
Morning, get old. Yeah, definitely, Coast. I always try to try to take a peek at things before we play them. I suppose if they naturally find their laboratory maniac, I could be in trouble. Like they just have if they just have three line three lands laboratory maniac. Alright, cast ancestral recall. Go. Hmm. If they have lab man, I hit set adrift, so that's nice. They're down three Simeon Spear Guides. The opponent's deck count is very small. Is uh currently 30. This puts them to 17. We milled their laboratory maniac. How does the Neoform deck win on turn one? It puts uh Gristlebrand into play. And then utilizing Nourishing Shoal alongside expensive green cards like Ogochi, Auto Auto Kanthan Worm or whatever this card is called. It draws its entire deck. And then it uses Simeon Spirit Guides along with Laboratory Maniac to eventually win the game. And by eventually I mean that turn. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mission briefing my glimpse the unthinkable this turn. Ooh. Ooh, they 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 put a they put a five five into play. That's exciting. Doing this during my upkeep so the surveil two can impact the card I draw for the turn. Don't really want either of these. Their Noxious Revival is also in here. So unless they have another Lab Man or another Noxious Revival, we should be good here. We'll get to Mission Briefing. Another Glimpse next turn. Morning, Jin. Happy Thursday. All right. Good, clean, easy 2-0 to start the day. More combo and graveyard decks, please. Hey, Zuchin. Thanks for the half a year. Welcome back.
My wife approved my application for Twitch Prime. Well, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime is great. I don't know how people. I don't know how people manage to wait for things to ship normally. That must be. That must be terrible. Hey, Lorwyn Soldier. Welcome to a live one. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good one. All right, Tron, you say. So the deck has to have 20 or fewer cards in it. I'm going to go ahead and slide orb under here. So the way this works is when a library has 20 or fewer cards in it, we can cast the card underneath this. Chalice on one. So much for my Krabby Patty. I think I want to just orb here. Yeah, I think stock blue black, like I said, stock blue black mill is pretty bad against uh, Leyline of Sanctity. In the, in the past, I've really liked like a deck similar to this with just a splash for Assassin's Trophy. I don't, I don't think goblins are likely very competitive in modern. Crucible. Sure. You're not missing a land drop. Um, we're just locked out of the game at this point, right? Because they're going to get... They're going to get Mycos and Vladis next turn, and then I can't do anything anymore. Yeah, I'll we'll just confirm that they're playing Eldrathi Tron. And again, like, my deck doesn't have any meaningful way to interact with these cards other than one copy of Set Adrift because, yeah... Assassin's, this is another matchup where Assassin's Trophy would just be excellent. So, Surgical is pretty good against Green Tron, but against Eldrazi Tron, it really doesn't accomplish a whole lot for you. Because, like, keeping them off of Tron doesn't really stop them from doing a lot. Oh, well, I guess this has two ways. Sorry, I apologize. This has two ways to interact with Leyline in the 75, but these are kind of temporary solutions. Uh, I'm always hesitant to uh, classify something as being strictly better uh, party bus, but in in my experience, I prefer the Sultai configuration. The green splash comes at a pretty low cost, and I think it adds good flexibility. All right, if you're a Trump supporter, cover your ears. Someone someone signed up my email for Donald Trump's mailing list, and holy, holy crap is the language, the language in this basically cult-like. Now it's not basically, it is cult-like. I'm I'm the only one you can get real news from. Don't don't let the fake news tell you what's going on with our campaign just like holy crap that's it's kind of oh oh he called fox fake news in an interview the other day and it's like come on dude is there is there any real news then like i thought i thought that was your channel Uh, do I want the guaranteed third land? 
I think I might want the guaranteed third land. Probably not. Slide damnation under there. Yeah, it's it's very it's very Orwellian. Make that's why I've seen make Orwell fiction again. It's been a good a good plug that I've seen. Ugh. I boarded. You'll note I boarded out my fatal pushes during sideboarding because they have a bunch of chalices. The, the email asserted, Nivik, that Trump's campaign was the only place I could get real news from, and I was unable to trust the fake news media. Which, if you're, if you're familiar and do readings about and understand, like, how cults operate and how they keep people encapsulated inside of their culture, um, one of the first things that they do is is establish the a nonsense fact that like the only person you can trust is the cult leader and everyone else is lying to you yeah yeah okay good i, I was saying that not necessarily just for your your benefit but for people in general I think I'm going to go ahead and jump block here because ideally I'm going to draw a black source next turn and kill both of these. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. So uh, I'm supposed to stack these the other way because I want this to resolve last because I want this to impact... I want this to impact my draw for the turn. I don't want Ms. Miracorb to clear it after the fact. All right, we got we got lucky. God bless. I did stack those triggers wrong, though. Worth noting. All right, so my lands don't untap here. Echoing truth. Nope. Let's keep that one. Oh my god, I'm just I am just mono misclicks this morning. Mono mono misclicks. That's fine. I've got a mission briefing. Ooh, crypt incursion could buy us some good time here. So the dredge mill matchup is actually really interesting in my experience. Because, like, you're kind of helping dredge, but at the same time, if they dredge too much, you're going to deck them. Now, this specific configuration of mill with four ley lines in the sideboard on top of its main deck surgicals is probably pretty reasonable against dredge. Uh, we have surgicals in our main deck. Now, one, one thing that's really... Uh, can I cast this yet? No, their deck doesn't have 20 or 3 cards in it. Um, one of the things that's really interesting to me about what we've seen from M20 so far is it looks to me at least like M20 is... Yes, the, the Dredge Mill matchup is very similar to the Grixis Death Shadow Burn matchup. That's a great comparison for people who have played that in Modern. Um, one of the things that... Um, one of the things that M20 kind of stands out to me with looking at it is the fact that um, it looks like they're printing a lot of safety valves in this uh, in this set to help um, 
to like for the new non-rotating format. It looks like there's cards that they're printing that like aren't necessarily ideal for standard, but are going to be good in a big card pool. Ooh, that's that's good. The the lay, the ley lines are a good example. Well, I mean these these cards aren't castable. Cause there's a there's a chalice on two. So I think I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cast both of these so that way they can't attack. Just keeping my hand empty here so the bridge goes to work. Yeah, rule rule of law is a good example. I'm just gonna go ahead and pass here. This archive trap might actually be lethal. And staring bridge reminding us why it's a messed up magic card this game. They're not a 15 cards in their deck at the moment. I have two cards left. Probably a concession here. I think I'm happy with how I'm sideboarded here. You could like maybe make an argument for Fatal Push. Maybe Fatal Push is better than Visions from Beyond, especially on the draw. I think either of them are great. At the very least, I'm going to split the difference here. Is Chalice Chalice on one is their most common thing to put it on? Yes, you can you can pad your timeout count by using the punt command. That is a, that is a legal play. All right, um, is this a mulligan? I think this is a mulligan. It technically has the visions as can trips, but it could just spin its tires and go nowhere. This hand's fine. Yeah, I think Orb's great. Orb's one of our better cards in this matchup. So, I'm actually going to... Hedron Crab on one here. So this way, if they... So this way, if they, uh... If they Chalice for one on two, I've got this in under the wire, basically. My orbs down. Crab, crabby boy is pretty good with fetches. I agree. I wonder if they have uh, I wonder if they have a witchbane orb in their sideboard. That would be pretty bad for us. 
Some of them, some of them make room for that. Others don't. Your sideboard, your sideboard slots kind of come at a premium in modern. Liquid metal coating. All right, so they're gonna start destroying our lands here. That's an archive trap. All right, I think I'm just going to play this orb and hope that double trap plus some orb triggers gets us there. Yeah, if they crack, if they crack the map, they have seven mana. And after they search here, I double trap them down to five cards. Uh, they could have tapped the Mind Stone. All right, uh, they actually lose, right? Because this mills them and then the, the orbs kill them. Sweet. Easy game, easy life. GG! So I, I can't use my lands for mana here, but they're going to mill 10 cards here, and they only have four in their deck. Good close game. Triggers. Oh. oh. What a silly deck. <laughs> Careful, Rose. We were locked out. How did we win? Sweet Rose. Uh, that was the second match. We are 2 and 0. We beat the 0 form in the first one. Sam's not amazing, but it's definitely fine. Range, range of keepable. These are my cards. There are many like them, but these ones are mine. It's in the title, but just in case people on mobile and I haven't seen it, I'm going to mention this a couple of times today. I'm going to do a little bit longer stream than I have been doing the last couple of weeks today because I'm going to throw some Dota Underlords in at the end. So we're going to do two modern decks to start things off today like we've been doing, three standard decks, and then we're going to wrap up with some. Some underlords. Mardu Pyromancer, you say? Their deck actually doesn't play that many fetches. So these traps might be a little bit hard to get going. Yep. I assume I'm going to lose this Manic Scribe here. Unless they have a... Uh, if they have a lot of removal and have a fetch land, they'll probably take an Archive Trap. I mean, if you're familiar with Mardu Pyromancer, Mardu Pyromancer is effectively Red Black Pyromancer. Like, a lot of people have, like, deviated a lot from the initial configurations where we had... They had just Lingering Souls as a Splash, but... 
Once a once upon a time, back in my day, Mardu Pyro was just was just a red black pyro with lingering souls deck. Yep, yep, there's some we got souls, man. I think Pyromancer's fine. I think I think Ensnaring Bridge isn't a good spot, and I think Pyromancer plays uh Leyline of the Void reasonably well with Faithless Looting. Mission briefings do work with trap, but unfortunately our opponent knows about the trap, so I don't think we're gonna ever ever end up getting anywhere with it. Do you play do you play Dota 2 Jin? If you have a season pass on Dota 2, you have access to Underlords already. And it's gonna go into open beta on mobile and uh, for everyone on desktop soon. Oh, I think we're dead. I guess I can surveil into a fatal push here. Yeah, this thing's gonna flash back a bolt and kill me. Oh, sweet, Jin. Yeah, yeah, when it releases, when it goes into open beta Nivik, it's going to be, uh, it's already Windows, OS X, and Linux under Steam, and it's going to release on iOS and Android as well. It is, it's a genuinely good game, I think. I've played, I've played about three hours, three or four hours of it. I'm excited to kick the tires on it again. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Is that card good or is that card great? That's... Mmm. Mmm. It's funny because someone in chat just said... Because someone in chat just said the decks have been cutting respect for tokens. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. I think I probably cut Crypt Incursion if I'm boarding in Leyline. Yeah, it's going to be completely free to play. I believe. Which is actually, which is kind of awkward in a way. It's kind of, it's kind of messed up that it's, it's a video game that I can't gain an advantage by. I can't gain an advantage by spending more money than my opponent. Seems, seems a little bit wrong to me. How am, I, how am I supposed to win win if not with my wallet? Everybody everybody's on a fair and level playing field just by installing the application. Have to have to be good to win more than my opponents. Unreasonable. That's communism. <laughs> Book? Yeah, exactly. This is, it's completely un-American. Ugh. Do we risk it for the biscuit? I've got a ley line in my opener. I've only got one land, but I've got like Dub's Knight of Soul Betrayal. This hand, like, can this hand lose if it draws, if it draws mana to cast Knight of Soul's Betrayal by like turn six? I don't think it can, right? That's true. Somebody else, somebody on Reddit told me that I'm only a top magic streamer because I have all the cards on Magic Arena. So it's going to be difficult for me to stream Dota, the Dota Underlords, because I can't spend money to automatically become a top streamer. So here's the best way to describe the auto chess variants if you haven't played it before, Jin. The auto chess uh, genre of game it's basically a deck building game meets tower defense. So the the rounds that you play in the in the uh, in the game are basically buying you car cards which are units from a lineup and then you position them on a game board and then they automatically fight. 
So there's no there's no dexterity element really. This is this is great. So now when we draw lands for the next three turns straight, our opponent will get to know how incredibly lucky we are. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Jid. I don't I don't need a dexterity element in my games. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's Field of Runes in our deck. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Uh, this is Knight of Souls Betrayal. It is a legendary enchantment that gives all creatures in play minus one, minus one. Hey, thanks for the eight months, Dan, and I appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Does tapping lands on Bono count as a dexterity element? Good question. Hey, negative. Well, thanks for shipping your prime this way again. Ho -ho! Ho -ho! We're so good at this. Why are we so good at this? Oh, chat. Can we start a GoFundMe for my opponent's keyboard when we uh, when we hit this fourth land next turn? I feel I feel like my opponent's gonna need a GoFundMe for a new keyboard here in a second. You know, someone just mentioned Blood Moon. I definitely should have fetched a basic swamp here. Because this this was a blue source. I should have fetched a basic swamp instead of the the watery grave. If I get I get blood moons here, I deserve to lose. Because I, I totally could have fetched a basic swamp. Manic, Manic Scribe's going to send a message here. It's going to communicate. Is, is this the end? Oh no, not my crab. We're going to get so much mileage out of the Temple Until emote. I'm so happy that we added that as an emote before they were standard legal. I almost didn't because we've been doing more standard. And then I was like, nah, this is funny. Let's do it. Yeah, teach the teach these kids their history, know where they've come from. Ooh, Master Chef, the seasoned pyromancer. I'm gonna hold on to this land for now because I could draw a Hedron Crab. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I was actually I was actually just about to say that. You got there at the same time I did. If I cast the second one, I'd enable Delirium. Now they're forced to give me Delirium, which is sweet. Twenty-five cards. Do temples just replace guild gates? Temples are much, much, much better than guild gates. Like, can I? Cannot even put into words how, how good a scry one is. Actually, let's, let's do, let's, this is, this is a good, this is how good temples are. All right. Let's say 
you're playing a 25 land deck and you've kept a two lander on the draw. Eh, let's say two lander on the play. Your chance of hitting your third land on time normally is 68%. So if you, you are a 25 land deck, you keep a two lander on the play, you're 68% to hit your third land on curve with no other effects. If you just add in one scry one from a temple, you jump up to 82%. A single scry gives you 14% to hit your third land drop when you keep two lands on the play in your 25 land deck. That's, that is math. I just put it in terms of math. That, that is how good these cards are. It is, it is a plus 14% to not brick and die in that situation. That's just one of many situations where it's going to give you the extra cards you need. We're going to hold on to this bad mamma jamma because we're going to cast this damnation out from under the shell deck aisle here in a minute. Ooh, you clipped it. Thank you. Let's add that to the temple command. Down to 17 cards in their deck. Thank you for the clip. So I'm going to sandbag this Damnation for a turn or two here. Try and get them to play some more stuff out. I don't want to go too low because I don't want to get burned out. My opponent's through one, two Lightning Bolts so far. Great, kill me. I'm going to 11, their deck's going to zero. All right, I'll message my social media manager now. That's a good idea to clip it. What's the hashtag for this new set? Is it MTGM20? Yeah, MTGM20. All right. Christie's, Christie's wrangling children upstairs, Detroit, but it should be tweeted out at some point today, soon, soon ish. I mean, my Reddit account doesn't do anything anymore. So Matt technically has the password to that one, but nothing gets done with that. I, I did, dumping truck. I think, I think temples are the perfect standard legal land, dual land, and I wish they were evergreen. I wish they were just always legal. Easy mulligan here, no ley line. His hand's not amazing, but fine. It's got a ley line in it. Bottoms up. Ah. 
Acker, thank you for the half of your support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I'm not saying from a power level, I'm not saying on a raw power level, temples are better than the original dual lands that they printed when magic was first created. What I'm saying is from a balanced perspective, in my opinion, they are the perfectly balanced dual for standard. The fact that they're fixing that comes into play tapped means that it's hard to get run over while playing them. And they add an important level of consistency to every deck in the format. Look at that. It's an adorable one. Three for two. I'm going to cast this search on two to try and hit my land drops here. I assume, I assume we're going to get the full cycle of temples eventually, or at least I hope we do. But I would not be surprised if we don't get all of them in the same set. All right, Krabby. Play the Krabby. Do I want to fetch around Blood Moon? I don't think so. They haven't been fetching around Blood Moon themselves. So I think I'd rather just have all my colors here. Yep, probably lose Bontus. Uh, I think the default binding to auto tap, auto tap your land when you click on them is M on Magic Online. I have it rebound to C. <clears throat> they could fetch Swamp here. And then Blood Moon us. Nope. Sweet. Yeah, I don't I don't think they're on the Blood Moon plan. Cycle on Earth, sure. Yeah, I agree, Burgle. Blood Moon. Blood Moon is not very good at the moment. I don't know that I like Dreadhorde Arcanist inside of Mardu Pyromancer. I feel like adding another card that leans into your graveyard seems mediocre. I'm not going to cast this Hedron Crab yet because I kind of want it as a follow-up threat post-Bontus here, I think. Yeah, a card like Arcanish just doesn't seem very good in Modern. It seems great in Legacy because Legacy doesn't have a ton of creature removal in it. But Modern, Modern has a lot more creature removal in it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna field for a swap and then bond choose them. Or not.
So, I'm actually going to Hedron Crab myself this turn. So that way I can flip my search for Azkanta to start digging for Knight of Souls Betrayal. So this only puts card number six in my bin. So if I mill myself for three, I get to flip my search next turn. Deal. Same, same result. Pay cliffs as opposed to pay walls. That's such a great way to put it. If we're a professional, we'll just draw Knight of Souls Betrayal this turn. I apologize for my lack of professionalism. All right, so we've got five shots at Damnation and Knight of Souls Betrayal here. We've got uh, three, two, two Knights and one Damnation in our deck. We're dropping to nine here. How many bolts has my opponent threw? They've not played, they've only played one bolt. So they've got some reach in their deck. Um, I guess I take Collective Brutality. If I draw a land, I can use this as a gain two and then still activate Ascanta this turn. Do I, do I play Manic Scribe? I feel like I don't want to turn on the removal spells. And I don't want to Azkanta now. I don't want to Azkanta now. I'm going to die to double bolt with this line, but I think I want to activate Azkanta again this turn. Now, I think Escalating Brutality is wrong. I think if they have double bolt, they have double bolt. I think the play to win line is just like, dig for my thing. And if I, if I miss again this turn, I'll take a pit stop to... Hmm, there goes the Brutality. If I, if I miss on the Ascanta activation this turn... And my draw step, I'll take it. I'll take a second to brutality them. Hey, Coons, thanks for the ten months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and Manic Scribe. And then I'm going to kill a thing, drain them. Uh, cutting decks in that are not currently in the queue is always $100, uh, McCullough. Cutting in, cutting in a deck that is currently in the queue but not in today's list is 50. And as always, getting something played on the next stream is much less than that. I might I might do a standard day on Saturday or Sunday, but if not, definitely definitely Monday again. Uh cuz I wanted the game too. Do we think gaining two is wrong there? So, do I want a glimpse here? I have a fatal push under the under the shell dock aisle. So I could I could glimpse them and then fatal push a spirit. I think I want to dig deep for the for the souls betrayal though. Knight of Souls Betrayal killing lingering souls is so on flavor. They're still only through one bolt, which is terrifying. I 
Are there two? Yeah, there are two. You're right. Good call. Gosh, that's unfortunate. How much to delete decks from the queue? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't take money to take decks out of the queue. Alright, dead to a lot. Dead to call against command, dead to bolt. Huh? You yeah, think I'm supposed to activate this? Okay. Uh ho, we're halfway there. Uh ho, living on a prayer. Take my hand, we'll make it, I swear. Oh ho, dee 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 If they don't burn us out this turn, we kill them next turn. Because Trap is 13 and Scribe is 3. And they're at 15 cards. Butt Cheek Clench Engage. Am I? Am I dead yet? Am I dead yet? Yeah, they probably have 4 bolts in their deck though. There's two two K commands. We're two O. This is game three of the third match. Close one here. To set, to set a bar that's low, this is not the worst modern deck we've played in the last week. hey -o. Look at us. Look at us. Undefeated. Milling them out. Milling them out. Ugh. Uh, no, we lost. We've lost two games. Scroggle! Thanks for streaming so often, so I have something to listen to at work. Thanks for keeping me around, Scoggle. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great Thursday. I I plan to be here most weekdays as long as y'all will have me. Sufa, thanks for the biddies. Good morning. Uh, Eldrazi Tron Burgle. I'm gonna ditch this I think against an unknown I would like a sustained source of mill or like a fatal push or something uh it was close burgle I think I think the Eldrazi Tron matchup for this deck is less good than the green Tron matchup but the green Tron matchup is great so the Eldrazi Tron matchup is probably fine Well, those are those are cards. At least, at least we're not drawing lands the next four turns. Um, we played some of the competitive commander leagues, the one v one commander leagues at one point forever ago on stream, and it's definitely on YouTube. 
but fair warning, it's probably not good content. A lot of the games we played weren't what I would consider particularly good games of Magic. Goblin Engineer Grixis. All right, you have my attention. Could be a Thopter Sword deck. Yeah. Yeah, Thopter Sword. All right. The Amulet. This deck, this deck dumpsters Amulet almost as hard as Blood Moon does. Have some, have some toys for your goblin engineer. Gosh, this is, this is another matchup where both Leyline and Knight of Souls Betrayal are probably absurd, right? As an ambulant player, I'd much rather play against Bloodbeard than Bill. Yeah, I'd believe that. Gonna play search this turn. Yeah, where where are my main deck surgicals, chat? Maybe I'm supposed to kill this this turn, just because if they start poop, pu pumping out thopters, they can activate it every turn. Are we dead? This is infinite, right? This is infinite. Urza, Thopter, Sword in the Bin is infinite. This is not... A Crypt Incursion matchup. I don't think it's a Collective Brutality matchup. It's definitely a Fatal Push matchup. Murderous Cut seems fine. They're searching their deck for Archive Trap. Plenty. Uh, Visions from Beyond is bad if I'm going to be Leyline of Avoiding them. How do we feel about Damnation and Bond Choose in this matchup? feel like they're probably not necessary. I think Knight of Souls Betrayal is likely just better. Do I want, like, what do I want set adrift for? Like, what are, what are these cards getting rid of? What, what critical cards are they taking off the table? Yeah, but like, is that better than just having extra patent surgical? Like, I'm not sure that these are better than, like, any of this disruption, and I'm not sure I want to cut any of these cards. Hey, I think I missed the notification on the Felix Gray that popped up under my headphones on. Ozakan, thanks for checking out the sponsor. Hope you enjoy your set of frames. Uh, Ozican, if you'd like, one of the special promos I'm doing with uh, Felix sponsorship is if you uh, want to take a peek at the deck queue and let me know if there's a deck you'd like to see a little bit sooner, you can bump something up in there for picking up a set of the glasses. Um, this hand's just like not fantastic and... My tipping point for do I want to mulligan a close hand is if I have ley lines in my deck, I usually mulligan. So 
I think this hand's like in the range of keepable if I was like a random game one, but post board in a matchup where I boarded in Leyline, I'm gonna I'm gonna try again. Orb is good and so is trap. Why is that? Oh, I guess Orb technically disrupts their combo, huh? Trap's only okay. I don't know that I believe trap is good. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try again here. This hand is probably worse. Eh, it's okay. We've got briefing extra paint fush. Let me give this one a try. Surgical. Surgical's kind of mediocre graveyard hate in this matchup just because they can sacrifice their a different artifact in response to get their sword back. Which makes it less good. Hedron Crab. Uh, yeah, that can stay there, right? Oh, I guess that's going to get... Maybe I should bottom that because I probably don't want it with Shell Dock Isle. I forgot I was Shell Docking on one. Slide a Glimpse under here to help us finish them off once we get them below 20. Maybe Pikes. Not not every game is going to play out in the exact same way the previous game played out. So notably did not hit either of their sword. Oh, we hit Thopter Foundry. I'm a liar. So if they don't Thopter Foundry this turn, I'll probably extirpate them. Haven't been able to watch live due to crappy internet where we move, but I'll always pop in and drop my sub. I appreciate the support, Nestor. If your internet's too poor to stream uh, stuff directly, uh, YouTube, generally speaking, has a um, YouTube has a, a feature where you can download videos and watch them offline, which is nice. I've done that on, on plane trips before. This is a Arkham's Astrolab. It just draws a card, and then it filters colors of mana for them. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play this, and then I'm going to draw step, extirpate this Thopter Foundry. And this has split second, so even though they have this engineer, I'm good to go ahead and do this in the draw step. Let's take a picture so it lasts longer. Fun, fun fact. The way extirpate is worded compared to surgical extraction, with surgical extraction, you have to manually elect to take the card you're targeting out of their graveyard. With surgical extraction, it is not optional to remove the card from their graveyard, which is why... On Magic Online, with Surgical, you have to actually click the one in their graveyard while your spell's resolving, and with Extirpate, it automatically just gets exiled. Not only, not only is that a moto getcha, but I definitely had that happen in paper too. Like someone Surgicals me and they forget to take the card that they're, they targeted out of my graveyard. And that is, them not taking the card out of my graveyard is a legal play. So you're just like, yep, I'll, I'll draw now. I'll dredge, I'll dredge my thing.
don't really think I want another land tier. Got one, got one anyways. They have two Urzas in their hand. Probably Fatal Push one of them this turn. This thing makes a Karnstruct when it comes into play too, right? It's a good, it's a good question. I think we might actually be pushing the the construct because this is this is what's gonna kill us, right? Oh, I also should have pushed this in response to the bubble, so that way they couldn't. Uh, they also should have played the bubble before playing this. Oh, they can float in response. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter. Good call. Hey, Dows. Good morning. Gully Seagull, thanks for the three months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. You yeah, actually got an email response from someone at your company earlier today, Dallas. I'm not sure if that was you or not. Um, it's on, on my post stream to do list. So I'm going to go ahead and just fire off this Field of Rune to get my extra black source out now. And then we're going to put a stop on my upkeep so that way I can surveil. Before I draw, we're going to let the search for as cancer trigger resolve first. Uh, not really in the market for Hedron Crab. Uh, there's a very small number of cards so many of the opponent has in hand up here. So they currently have one card. So we're going to go ahead and mission briefing here. And again, I'm doing this before I draw for the turn because I would like to surveil to kind of sculpt what I'm drawing. Like, I don't really want to draw either of these. I'm going to go ahead and target Fatal Push with this. Draw for the turn. I'm open to any questions. <laughs> oh, Twitch chat. Dedicated YouTube lurker hit Mythic last night with Aristocrats. Awesome, Gully. Congrats. That's definitely one of the most fun, fun aggro decks in Standard. I need to figure out what deck I'm going to play in the Red Bull tournament next weekend. I'll probably just play the Feather deck again. We'll see. It's either that or the Aristocrats deck. Feather deck was okay at the Nerve Rage weekend. I really, I really wish they would have put their standard tournament after the new set dropped. I'm kind of spent on the standard format. They chose not to search with this, which is smart. Not enable my trap. Uh, yeah, maybe Simic. Yeah, I agree. I don't, and I don't, I don't think I'm alone in being kind of spent on this standard format. Like my. My deck queue since I started doing standard is currently the slowest it's been. So I think I think I'm down to 
Like, as of today, before we play today's decks, there's only, like, 15 standard decks in my queue. And for comparison's sake, last season, my queue was full up until the day of release. And I don't, I don't think that's going to happen this time around. And I've, I've been playing less standard this season than I played in previous seasons. Yeah, I am, I am also in danger of not hitting Mythic this season, and I don't think I'm going to try. That's true. It might... Well, so, because I'm doing two modern decks a day, we might fill it out. I guess, how many, how many streams do we have? I guess it releases on the second, so I do only have one week's worth to fill. And like, like we're doing extra modern today and the rest of them are going to do extra modern next week. And we're going to do a little bit of Underlords later today too. So we can fill in with other games that are interesting. We might just get burned out by this Pyrite spell bomb. And these Goblin, these Goblin Engineers going to town. They're at 15. They're at 15 like They're also at 15 cards in their deck. I, I needed this to be a card that milled them. All right, let's do this and see where we get. Nowhere, nowhere fast. Yeah, there's going to be plenty. There's going to be plenty of new things once the new set drops. In fact, I've already started adjusting my schedule for when the new set releases. I'm planning to do the new set releases on a Tuesday, Tuesday, July 2nd. I'm planning to do I'm planning to do 10-hour streams Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at the start of July. That'll be that'll be all standard. Are we dead this turn? I think we're dead this turn, right? Maybe. This does two, four, five. I think we're at one. Yeah, Shell Shell Doc's active. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, I didn't see they were targeting Pithing Needle. Oh, they named Ascanta. That's fine. All right. We have died. I believe we have died. Yeah. Yeah, they can kill us. They can kill us and upkeep with the engineers. All right, close. We're three and we're three. We did die to one power wizards. Needed needed to find our. Uh, I maybe they couldn't kill us on upkeep, but by drawing a blank there, we didn't have any outs because we were at three. I think they were short. They might have been short red mana to kill us on the upkeep. But we were we were just dead to their combat step. So the I'd have to go back and check the tape, but uh, they named search for Ascanta with their pithing needle. Turn one concealed courtyard often means Eldraz or Leon and Arbiter poopers, which means they probably don't have search effects, which means these archive traps are likely not going to have a text box. I'm leading on my flooded strand on one as opposed to my shell dock aisle because this usually implies Leon and Arbiter. A Johnny's pride mate. Okay. 
All right, not the droid I was thinking of. Bit of a brew here, it looks like. Brew, haha. -ha. Yeah, it could be like Black White Soul Sisters. We are we are certainly a deck that doesn't care about no life gain. Nobody has killed people with more one power wizards than Jeff while playing Delver. Ain't that the truth? The crypt incursion under here is probably gonna go a long way for us. Silly opponent, you've activated my trap cards. Do 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 They're at twenty two cards in their deck. These each mill for six. This mills for three. Crypt incursion gains me infinite. Oh, did I say they mill for six? I meant 12. I meant they each mill for 12. It's weird. We build them for a lot, but I don't see any actual cards in their yard. Can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Why would I want to cast a non-creature spell this turn, opponent? Cast a creature. Now, I do have to hope that they don't have... I do have to hope that they don't have a uh, Gideon Champion of Trials. Is that the one that gives you the emblem? Opponent, opponent seen enough. I probably want Set and Drift and Echoing Truth just in case they have that Gideon in their 75. Surgical Extraction doesn't seem particularly good here. Collective Brutality seems mediocre. Uh, Visions from Beyond is probably a fine trim. Especially if I'm bringing in the Bridges. All right, let's do it. Maybe I'm supposed to trim some traps. I could see that. Maybe the second briefing is better than like the fourth trap. They do have the, they might cut their guy that searches after getting double trapped there. Double Manic Scribe in the opener seems pretty reasonable. It blocks okay. So people always make comments about Moto's appearance. One thing I would like to make sure is abundantly clear, this version of Magic Online does look better than the older versions. If you go back and look at like Moto V3, it's hideous. Tapped Birdie, thank you for the brand new Prime support. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Uh, we are three and one. Go Google search some pictures of Moto V3. All right, so I can play this crab. How do we feel if I mill myself for three, this flooded strand puts a fourth card in the graveyard and then I can set a drift there at Johnny's Pride Mate? Eventually. I think that's my plan. 
Milling, milling myself also triggers my Manic Scribe eventually too, which is nice. Maybe I should have crabbed myself twice since I have so many scribes in my hand. I could see that too. Hey, 1605. Thanks for shipping your prime support back this way again. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. I think I have to burn my graveyard to set adrift this 8-8. It's unfortunate, but it's where I'm at in life. Let's have another giant creature here. If we don't find an ensnaring bridge soon, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And one of them is currently under here, unfortunately. And their, their deck still has 38 cards in it. Yeah, silly, silly two-color opponent. Please crack a fetch land. Why, do they not have a creature this turn? Deal. This opens up Damnation and Bantus as live draws. All right, so this lets me trap them. And after I trap them, Visions from Beyond turns into Ancestral Recall. So that seems good for me. The old, the old five mana hard cash trap. We've had a lot of five mana hard cash traps this league. Probably throwing a manic scribe under a bus this turn. Or they're going to path all of them and that's not going to be an option. I think I think I want Manic Scribe to be a gain eight here. Kind of surprised to not see them attack with the Souls Attendance. I think those are like a free two points, but I'll take the extra life. Hoping to find Damnation or Bantus here. Either of those will be really good. Crypt, in, Crypt Incursion's a good corollary prize. Constellation prize. Constellation's the word I'm looking for there. All right. Murderous Cut's not bad. Their deck's down to 24 cards. I'm unfortunately a mana short of being able to trap them and activate my Sheldock Isle. But next turn I'll be able to do that. Okay, so I do this. And I can do this. And then I'm going to just do this while they're tapped out. And then uh, next turn I get to five mana trap, shell dock isle trap, and then they'll be milled out. 
So unless they have a discard spell or a way to kill this shell deck isle, they're gonna they're gonna lose. Or a way like a Gideon emblem. If they have Gideon emblem, they'll be fine, obviously. Sweet. I think we got him. Sweet. The Anti Camper. Thank you for the five month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. <sighs> going, going out on their own terms, a silent clearing. All right. We hit the 4 1. We lost to. The new uh, Grixis Thopter Sword Urza deck, but uh, pretty solid rate overall. This the mill deck. We we played different iterations of mill a lot in the past, and it's always been kind of a metagame style deck. Which in general, I'm not a huge fan of in modern, but it does mean if you hit the right mix of matchups, you're gonna have a good time with it. In my experience, this deck's very good against things against spell based combo as well as decks like Tron and Amulet Titan, because being able to just like take random cards out of their deck and then surgical them ends up being very good in a lot of spots because there's a lot of decks in modern that want specific things. This deck also just gets the jam of four Leyline of the Voids in the sideboard to hedge these graveyard matchups even further. So like post board against the graveyard decks, you've got Leyline, Surgical, Crypt, and Extirpate. I think in general, I kind of like having the small splash for Assassin's Trophy still, but straight blue-black, if you're looking to have clean mana, is definitely reasonable. Uh, the the Sultai version has a hard time playing Sheldock Isle, and that card was good at multiple points today, so maybe maybe it is worth just sticking to two colors. But at any rate, if you're in love with the idea of milling people in Magic, this deck is competitive.